for a couple of more people to join. We will begin shortly. Maybe another two minutes. Or... My voice is not clear. Please let me know. We are going to start with our free webinar series. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Haider. Yeah. We are going to start with our free webinar series. Okay. Our aim is to cover, like I said, 70 by COVID for MRC 1, 2, and basis. So we will, this is a core session. So it will be a little extra. We'll be learning a couple of things a little more deeper, but and complex pathophysiologies, which is definitely not needed for your level. Okay, so a couple of us are here and we are going to begin shortly. Only thing I want to tell you always is like time waits for none. The biggest, biggest thing to handle is time. Okay, recently I've, I've experienced that. Somebody whose mic is on, can somebody mute the mic whose mic is on? Whose microphone is on? Please mute from your end, doctor. It will be great for everyone, okay? Like I said, time waits for none. Time is something so precious. I learned a very painful lesson to lesson like two days back. I literally missed out one very, very good opportunity with NHS. Only thing I had done is because due to travel and I was back to my home country, I just <clears throat> forgot to set it set the interview time and the reminder in my schedule. That's it, blown off. So why I'm telling you this is like, time is so important, so use it wisely. If you just miss it, then opportunities are never gonna come. Whatever I left, other guy grabbed and went, that's it, it's closed now. So use the time wisely. With that, we are gonna start seizure disorder. All right, couple of videos, okay? Couple of videos are there, couple of guidelines are there. Everything we are gonna see, okay? When it comes to seizure disorder, three things you should be very aware of. There's a nice guidelines you should be aware of. All right, second thing is ILAE, that is internationally against epilepsy. These people classify seizures. These people give the definition for seizures. These people give the criteria for seizures, medications, everything. So, and in hand, these people go around. So both the things we are going to see, and a couple of MCQs obviously we are going to work with seizures. So this is going to be now. So with this, without wasting further time, I'm going to play a video to interesting type of seizures before we step into seizure proper. And who's going to hear and who's going to tell me exactly what kind of seizure is this? Okay. Okay. Fine. I'll just raise my volume. I'll make sure my computer sound is shared to you. Now I want you all to see this little girl, all right? And tell me what is happening to her. This can occur in adults as well, okay? Who's going to tell me you have seen a video, you have seen a patient right in front of you? Okay. Can anyone tell me what seizure is this? Or is it a seizure or not? You are free to answer my session. No problem. Make mistakes, make mistakes here. <laughs> Don't make mistakes. Uh, it's not a psychogenic seizure, doctor. Actually, I'm trying to tell like you know this little girl is actually laughing out this little girl is actually laughing out for this is the video you want me to read the video once again that's fine no problem see here okay excellent dr sobi david got okay see this i hope video stream is fine for everyone because I made sure I'm in 5G. 
I hope should be for everyone. Okay. This is a sticker study. Okay. This is a yes. Good evening, Dr. Ibrahim. Good evening. Nice to meet you for a case here. Okay. This is a July. My voice is clear now. Am I audible on the screen? Can somebody type yes? Because I don't know things up with the Zoom and uh, it just disconnected and reconnected itself. Now we're fine. Is my voice is clear and my video is clear? Okay. Okay. You can't hear me. Can you hear me now? Hello? Can you guys hear me now? Can you guys hear me now? Okay, there is minor tax here. Just excuse me for two minutes. I will just reconnect. I'll just turn on and turn off my five G. Excuse me for two minutes. Just stay here. I'll be stay here. I'll be just back. I'll just turn off to other another connection. Hey, is my voice is clear now? Yeah, now is it fine? Now is it clear? Yeah, this should be much better. Okay, fine, fantastic. This should be fine because now it's in 5G. Okay, all right. This is called a gelastic seizure. I hope all of you seen the video. Gelastic seizure is a type of seizure where people will simply start laughing. Okay, I'll come to the seizure proper. Just I wanted to show you a couple of interesting videos on seizures. Okay, now can anyone tell me what type of seizure is this? Just watch the video carefully and watch the guy's movement. Can anyone tell me what type of seizure this is? See the guy carefully who's there. See a train is moving. This is an actual incident happened in India. See the train is moving and watch this guy's movement. Every movement. This is a sad incident happened to a cop. All right. Can anyone tell me what seizure is this? First, what happened is that guy's head, if you carefully notice, he took a 180 degree rotation, like then again, then he slipped. Yes, this is a seizure. There's a paper there. No. Okay. This is called gyratory seizure. Gyratory 
seizure. This is called, or this is what you call as your gyratory seizure. Okay. They are defined as actually a rotation. Like I said, 180 degree people rotates as a result of that, some unknown mechanism. Okay. Because nobody has come to a proper conclusion. 23 years back, they witnessed this. And again, now they are seeing this. I don't know, a lot of videos are there with a couple of misinformation and good information about this. Actually, what happened to that particular person is a seizure activity. This has been witnessed way back, okay? So just I wanted to show you some interesting videos I showed you. Now we are going to proper seizure. First thing, all should know what is a seizure and what is an epilepsy, okay? This is ILA definition, not my own. This is ILA definition. Any paroxysm of abnormal or excessive synchronous neuronal activity is called as a seizure, okay? Three words you should know. First is abnormal, excessive, synchronous activity in the brain is a seizure, okay? If two or three unprovoked seizure, okay? I'll tell you what is a provoked and unprovoked. Unprovoked is without any cause. There are a lot of causes for a provoked seizure, okay? Provoked seizure. Two or three unprovoked seizure, okay? Without any cause means what? There shouldn't be any identifiable cause. I'll ask all of you one question. If you are seeing a patient who is actually convulsing, all right? After stabilizing him, maybe all your ABCDE, everything you've done, which one test you will do right at the spot? Who's going to answer me? People in clinic should be able to answer this question. Which one blood test you have to do right at the spot? Which one blood test? Please don't tell me lactate or prolactin level. On the spot, sir, you don't do lactate blood or glucose. prolactin sir, blood glucose we can uh, see, sir. Excellent, 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 excellent. Blood glucose, that is what you have to do right away because you have mm. to rule out hypoglycemia yeah. there. Then you can A see A all A your... Yes, doctor. That's the first thing you need to rule out. Then comes every other thing you can rule out in due course of time. First thing I want all of you to know is like any seizure activity, first rule out hypoglycemia because one SH who lost a patient here, like I mean, six, seven months back and his license got canceled to practice from GMC. He was very enthusiastic. It was during the, just the recovery phase from COVID time. That was actually a hypoglycemia. All right, that's a hypoglycemia. He is a type 1 diabetic. He came here as an immigrant. There was no proper medical record. This guy immediately started pushing benzodiazepine. Done. So, okay, first thing, always, 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 it's going to be your hypoglycemia as a dangerous thing. First, immediately rule that out before you go to anything. Now, seizures can be generally classified into generalized and partial seizures. These are the broad classification. If you go, before we are going into seizures, certain things I want all of you to know. You should be knowing the difference between a seizure and a syncope. Okay, seizure and a syncope, all of you should know. What is the difference between them? And a seizure and a pseudo seizure, you should be knowing before we step into seizure properly. Any seizure, any seizure, there will be some aura or some focal automatism. Okay, what is an automatism? Some automatic movement. Somebody can be lip smacking. They're just moving the lips up and down. Okay. Everything will be there. But before a syncope, there is always going to be some protrom. That's why in patient's examination, if syncope is the complaint, if the patient is telling the patient has fainted down, you have to ask under three categories, what he was doing when that happened and how it happened, what happened, who was the witness and three, what has happened to him after that. So some pre-syncopal protrom he can be having a chest pain, some palpitation, racing of his heart can be there. Yes, doctor, yes, it does. And some diaphoresis, is excess sweating, all these things will be there, okay? Well, this is in case of a syncope. In seizures, there can be some myoclonic jerks will be there before the loss of consciousness. Before a patient goes into LOC, loss of consciousness, there can be some jerks, there can be some twitches movement will be there. In syncope, whereas it will happen after that, okay? Somebody's mic is on, I think, doctors, please can you mute it off so it will be easier for all of us, all right? And in syncope, this myoclonic jerks or anything that can be after the loss of consciousness. For one example I can give you is a vasovagal syncope, all right? Usually the seizure time will be very little. 
okay very little usually one to two minutes there can be prolonged seizures also okay syncope is very brief less than one minute and fourth difference is vitals like bp and heart rate like blood pressure and heart rate typically it will be elevated in case of a seizure whereas in syncope it can be actually low any syncope like cardiogenic syncope low cardiac output bp will drop actually and heart rate can also drop secondly and fifth point of difference is like you know your post ictal confusion will be there in case of a seizure definitely there will be some post ictal confusion will be there but in case of a syncope it won't be there okay and number six more often horizontal deviation of flickering of eyelids or sometimes blank stare like your absence seizure we will see all the videos every single thing we are going to see all these things will be there here mostly in syncope it is going to be vertical deviation of the eyes will be there okay eyes may roll back and some flickering of eyelids can be seen in both in seizure some many a times not for all seizure many seizures eyes will be open and syncope it can be closed and seizure one of the important thing is your lateral tongue biting but lateral tongue biting doesn't happen in every person who is experiencing a seizure okay and this is another important table you should know seizure versus psychogenic non-epileptic form seizures that's pnes or your psychogenic seizure all right here the duration will be less there the duration will be more okay seizure can occur even from a sleep where the other thing will not okay here seizure can be stereotyped there it can't be here eyes closed eyes will be open in seizure in any psychogenic person who is acting or like somebody who's like acting or emulating a seizure you will typically find them their eyes closed and here lateral tongue biting will be there and there cannot it cannot be there if the if the person is clever enough he can bite his tongue laterally and here again all your urinary fecal incontinence can be here like, okay there it cannot be there here post ictal recovery will be very rapid in case of a psychogenic epilepsy but here it won't be because if you typically find a person who is mimicking or acting as if he is or he or she is having a seizure they will just you know kind of you can easily find with this simple signs okay there are a lot of signs are there there are asynchronous movements and pelvic thrusting and bicycling movement that can be in seizure also that can be in the PNES, that is your psychogenic non-epileptic form seizures or psychogenic seizures and anything it can be there, okay? Also, there can be a fluctuating course will be there and anxiety disorder, anything can be there in case of a PNES, all right? And also, there can be moaning or talking during the episode. That can also be there. In seizure, patient won't moan or talk during the episode. But in a PNES, you can find them doing that. So, these are the main differences because some of the MCQs in MRCP will come on this and there you may get a patient with this finding also who just try to malinger that some illness which the patient is not having. All right. Suppose some of the causes of provoked seizures you may be asked in MRCP. So you should be knowing and also you should be knowing as a clinician as well. All right. Causes of a provoked seizure. What are the things that can provoke a seizure? Alcohol withdrawal. Yes, it can provoke seizure especially typically around 48 hours post withdrawal it can but not in all alcoholics that is for actually someone whom you can call as, as an alcoholic okay that means my psychiatric lecture i'll explain you the types of alcoholics what is the gelin gelin kiss classification and everything all right then drug intoxication i'll give a list of drugs which can actually provoke a seizure then hyponatremia can provoke and hypernatremia again can provoke hypomagnesemia hypocalcemic seizures can be there hypoglycemia this is very 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 important and non-ketotic hyperglycemia again it can provoke seizure uremia can provoke a seizure and hypoxia can provoke hypothyroidism and dialysis disequilibrium okay this occurs in the first time when a people person is like undergoing a dialysis they will have a dialysis disequilibrium syndrome due to <clears throat> change in their osmotic volume so there will be some disequilibrium as a result of that there will be some seizure activity can be seen in porphyria yes there can be some seizure these are the causes of your provoked seizures okay so whenever you get a question on seizure just to make sure any of this any of these clues are there okay then it can be a provoked seizure okay not a classical epilepsy all right drug induced seizure this has asked in your clinical form so many times they will give a question and they will ask which drug can stress provoke a seizure 
may or may be not but it cannot be a single factor that can provoke a classical seizure or an epilepsy unless the patient is already having a epileptogenic focus in the brain if the patient is prone to epilepsy he is already having a focus in the brain that is causing epilepsy the stress can provoke but in a normal patient see i am a normal patient and you are a normal person just because you or i get stressed we don't develop a seizure as a result of just the stress okay but a person who is an epileptic okay who is an epileptic in that patient a stress can provoke a seizure okay and analgesics yes it can and anti cancer drugs so many times they had asked this one of the drug in this list they will ask and they will give a seizure history they will ask like which of the drug can cause seizure clinical form once again i am telling you everyone please for part one people this is a very very important subject don't take it lightly they can ask anything from this one they can ask anything from this one all right all your drug busulfan chlorambucil citerabin doxorubicin all this drug can cause even your wind blistin wind blastin wind crystin <clears throat> all this drug even your cisplatin again it can cause seizure so this has been asked in one of the past papers okay then antimicrobials cephalosporin they had asked okay but please don't forget about your carbapenems fluoroquinolones like ciprofloxacin can induce seizure isoniazid can induce seizure penicillins also induce seizure. but they had asked which one of the following antimicrobial can induce seizure in that they had given one cephalosporin okay as one of the option all right and then again hypoglycemic agents all of this whichever drug that can cause hypoglycemia even your insulin if you are just someone overdosing themselves with an insulin they can definitely go ahead for a seizure and all the immunosuppressants like acetaminophen cyclosporin mycophenolate tacrolimus all these things can cause seizure because they typically go ahead and lower your seizure thresholds antipsychotics you don't need to ask because almost every antipsychotic has a potential because see sure one or the other way all right so all these drugs should be knowing at least little in theophylline they had asked once this is one of the drug that that, that can cause seizure amphetamine you all know methylphenidate again it can cause seizure and other drugs like phenylephrine pseudoephedrine all these drugs can cause seizure these are why i am stressing on this long list of tables because couple of times they had asked a question out of this so you all should be aware of it not just that not just that not just about solving mcq even when you are going to treat your own patient you should be aware of this drugs okay especially in uk setting if you are planning to work in uk you should be very very clear on this you should be taking a proper drug history if the patient is already having some seizure activity you should be very careful in prescribing any of the drugs okay and what are the behaviors in seizure there are a lot of behaviors okay there are a lot of cognitive behaviors can be there because typically seizure won't occur like how they are showing in the movies and all because people worked in emergency would have had a first time <clears throat> first hand and first time experience with seizures because they are the people who just encounter them fresh by the time they come to our wards in general internal medicine they will be mostly settled down all right so typically it's not just your tonic clonic movements there are so many things can be there so many things can be there okay and among that you have to know very well about something called as your automatism can be an aggression suddenly people can turn aggressive eye blinking head nodding movement orofacial seizures can be there pedaling movement pelvic thrusting okay perseveration sometimes sexual activity sexual activity there are records where seizures that people just started flashing they just started becoming an exhibitionism exhibitionist activity undressing vocalization sudden walking out of nowhere like out of nowhere they'll be sitting they will be suddenly walking any of this automatic movement can be a descriptive behavior of a seizure as per ilae and there is a huge list emotional autonomic motor sensory and laterality this is how ilae that is international league against Epilep epilepsy classify the descriptive behaviors in seizure you don't need to do know everything at least know one thing at the end of the thing okay dr ibrahim that's fine perfect you can join us again only thing you i want you to take home from this two slides is seizure is not just your tonic clonic movement it can be just anything it can be just anything sometimes even like mentioned here hot and cold sensation seizure can manifest like that 
seizure can manifest as a paralysis. What is that? Dodge paralysis. For seizure patient going into a paralysis. All right. Seizure can even manifest as a palpitation, some pilo erection, sometimes a tachycardia. All right. Anything. So now we come to proper seizures, that is generalized seizure. Again, generalized seizures can be tonic clonic, absent seizure, atonic seizure, or myoclonic seizure. All these things, everything we are going to see. All right. And comes your partial seizure. Partial seizure can be simple and complex partial seizure. <clears throat> First thing is a simple partial seizure. What is a simple partial seizure? These are focal onset seizure. Means what? If your brain, this is your brain, it the onset is on one particular focus. Okay, that is a focal onset. Generalized onset. Okay, it can involve a wide area and unknown onset seizure that can also happen. And then complex. Okay, complex seizure. What is a complex seizure? Complex seizure is. As per ILAE, a focal seizure, the seizure due to one particular focus with the discognitive feature, any feature that is impairing the cognition. Okay, that is what is what do you call us here? Complex seizure. Now I'll show you a video of a partial seizure patient. You'll find it. Okay, you'll find it. Just see the lady, how this lady is presenting. Okay, now she's fine. Just see the flickering movement. Just see the flickering movement around her neck. Dr. Abdul, I'll come to absence issues in a minute. See the flickering. See the flickering. See the flickering in hand. Notice the eyes. Okay. Again, see the chest wall. See, and that moment is not properly recorded. Actually, she closes one eyelid up and down. Okay. So, this is your typical partial seizure. Okay. It can occur anywhere, but it will just start with one end. Then it can go to your eye like a Jacksonian. I will tell you what is a Jacksonian. But this is your complex partial seizure. All right. This is how it present with the minor flickering. There is a simple partial seizure. Okay. There's a simple partial seizure. Simple partial seizure is never a part of epileptic form syndrome. All right. Here, the characteristic thing, uh, unless confirmed by yes, doctor, I'll come to your point. Definitely I'll explain you because NICE says something little different. I'll show you. Okay. I'll show you. First, let me just tell about your types of seizure, then we will go to the guidelines proper, okay? Then simple partial seizure, one clue will be the interictal EEG will be perfectly normal here. Typically in most seizure, EEG abnormality will be there, like Dr. Jodi said. But here in a simple partial seizure, if you call, if you want to call something as a simple partial seizure, the interictal EEG will be completely normal. If you take any EEG between two seizure episodes, it will be perfectly normal, all right? There will be perfectly normal. And there will be some definitive cause for most simple partial seizure, like an ischemia or a tubercloma can come. And there won't be any postictal confusion, mostly a motor one. This is okay. Rarely any sensory autonomy. Most of the simple partial seizure will be motor one. Means what he'll have only motor symptoms. Okay. So if you find all these things in a patient or in a question, this is going to be a simple partial seizure. Every point is important. It's never, first of all, a part of an epileptic form syndrome. First thing. Second thing, the interictal EEG will be normal. If any question they are telling you or any patient, you are finding the interictal EEG. Means the EEG between the two episodes is going to be perfectly normal. And there will be some cause for that. Okay. It you can be encountering this in a stroke patient or can be in a tubercloma patient. And the patient is telling there is no postictal confusion. Once the seizure episode is done, he'll be perfectly fine. And mostly motor one. He won't experience any numbness, tingling, or any sometimes patient may experience itchy sensation, some strange thing going in your the tummy, okay? That kind of sensation they will have. Some people even have sensation to defecate or urinate. And even there are cases where they suddenly have a sens sensation to ejaculate. All the sensation can occur in a seizure patient. So no sensory symptoms, no such sensory autonomy will be there here. Only a motor thing with all this finding it's going to be a simple partial seizure, okay? Then you should know something called as a Jacksonian march, okay? It's a movement. 
okay they will give you a history of this it starts with a starts distally maybe a patient is sitting there it starts in his hand from the hand it will goes to the limb it will go to the shoulders it will go to the neck okay it can occur in any simple partial seizures okay proximally it starts with distally it is starts going to go proximally and it's most commonly seen in upper limb like this lady showed a type of jacksonian march if you see in the video all right typically if you they give a syndrome like that if they explain a finding clinical finding like that then it's a jacksonian march okay always remember the movement will always start distally okay the movement will always start distally means what your fingers your hands or your palms like that it starts from there it can go to your arm it can go to your shoulders your chest area and to the face this is your jacksonian march okay mm -hmm. and tarts palsy another time you should be knowing tarts palsy like i said it's a transient weakness of the affected limb that lasts for hours okay it's a type of palsy where there will be some weakness for example if a patient is having a tonic clonic seizure in his right upper limb the right upper limb will be weak he will exhibit a classical weakness if you just try to test his power okay that is what we call as a tarts palsy this can occur after seizure and there is an other term you should be knowing is something called epilepsia partialis continua okay what is an epilepsia partialis continua this has been asked in mcq for two people okay? this is nothing other than a continuous simple partial seizure which are lasting over 24 hours continuously it will occur okay this continuously it will occur what it is not a status epilepticus you will find the other things of simple partial seizure will be there what is the other things of simple partial seizure i gave you four to five lines first thing okay interictal eeg will be normal and there won't be any postictal confusion but the seizure activity will remain more than 24 hours okay this is called your epilepsy partial is continua then aura i hope all of you are aware of aura subjective psychic or sensory phenomenon is what you call as an aura all right then comes your focal seizure with discognitive feature or discognitive features here it's a old come with the old term is your complex partial seizure now the new term is going to be your focal seizure with discognitive feature features now they are no more using the term complex partial seizures simple then focal seizure with discognitive feature it's a part of other epilepsy syndromes okay most of the epilepsy syndrome there are a lot of syndromes we are going to see some selected few syndromes okay most common among all this is your medial temporal lobe epilepsy okay medial temporal lobe epilepsy typically it affects youngsters you will find a complaint early morning they have some seizure attack or early morning around the time of breakfast they have a seizure attack it is a medial temporal lobe epilepsy okay aura is typically associated with this typically an abdominal aura like i said some strange feeling they will complain as if they feel something crawling from the bottom of the stomach they will come come with some strange complaints and followed by that there will be some seizure activity this can be followed by emotionless stare i hope people would have seen this in seizure patients sometimes they go on a emotionless stare all right automatism can be seen and anterograde amnesia will be there in this case of seizures so <clears throat> how to investigate and manage manage this kind of focal seizure and discognitive features i am telling the overall investigations in every single investigations we are going to see step by step okay t2 m t2 weighted mri if you can see there will be increase intensity in your hippocampal area mostly on the right side eeg will show your anterior temporal spikes there might be a history of febrile seizure in childhood most of these people with focal seizure with this cognitive feature the most common type like i said is your medial temporal epilepsy if you do an mri there there will be high intensity signal on your hippocampus i think for uh, part 2 they had put us now only once they had done they put an mri image of this with the high signal intensity on hippocampus most people didn't got the correct answer because that's a very tough question and mri image reading and all unless you are through that you won't be able to do like find it just like that and eeg typically shows anterior temporal spike eeg for part 2 they will show they will definitely show eeg couple of eegs i'll show you as well there will be history of febrile seizure in the childhood so they gave the construct of the entire question like that here is the patient 
who had childhood febrile seizure from childhood onwards he had some febrile seizure and his eeg showed some anterior temporal spikes then they immediately they put an mri and they wanted the candidates to diagnose what is the condition the condition is a medial temporal lobe epilepsy okay medial temporal lobe epilepsy or mesial temporal lobe epilepsy whatever you want to call it. it's a type of focal seizure with discognitive feature so <clears throat> many a time they gives things like that mostly it's medically refractive sometimes it can go for a surgical correction as well treatment of choice in case of a surgical treatment of choice it's going to be hippocampal but some patients will recover with medications also all right see this seizure this is another seizure lady see the seizure a young lady see the seizure this young girl This is a type of mesial temporal lobe epilepsy. See, yes, emotionless stir also occurs in absence issue. Yes, first there is a hand movement. Following the hand movement, there is a blank stir. She is looking at something up. only the hand movement then after that she started looking at something up if you carefully see the full video she will go and give a blank stare after that blankly she will look at something else that's a classical thing okay this is the change i said in the hippocampus okay this is the change i said in the hippocampus this is the image they have given but the problem with parto is sometimes the type of material they used to print this images don't know i don't want to comment on that it will be like the <clears throat> everything will appear black and white only in that image because nothing will appear as clean as what you are seeing in a system or in your pax imaging system okay this is how the epilepsy uh, epileptiform focus look like typically in the temporal side see if you here see if we can this is were temporal leads if you see in the temp around the temporal leads there will be epileptiform focus this is around the temporal leads c t temporal lead there is some epileptiform focus so epileptiform focus will be there around the temporal leads eeg is complex i don't recommend everyone to know eeg but at least learn to diagnose that from a history all right now comes generalized onset seizure in the generalized on generalized onset seizures all you have to know is your absent seizure so many people are after absent seizures i'll explain you about it's a part of epileptiform syndrome always okay here what happens is sudden brief loss of consciousness without loss of postural control sudden brief loss of consciousness many times surprisingly this absent seizures were diagnosed in adults we thought we will end up thinking many times have we noticed people even doctors suddenly they will look at something and keep their chin in their palms rest in the, and they start to thinking so much people typically do that but all of that is not absence seizures but some blank stare many times we may end up thinking okay he is thinking something so he is staring at something or he is seeing something and something is flooding in his mind sometimes it can be actually an absence seizure okay here there won't be any post ictal confusion all right it's typically provoked by hyperventilation like inflating a balloon once they given a scenario of a case in mrcp when a girl actually kept trying to inflate a balloon she goes blank after inflating the balloon she goes blank she looks at the roof or the terrace and stares just like that for some time then she comes back to normal here in an absence seizure if you take an mri it is going to be completely normal mri is going to be completely normal that is the difference between this and your mesial temporal lobe epilepsy or other type of partial seizure here it's going to be perfectly normal eeg will show eeg will show a slow spike not just spook it's a spike and wave pattern slow sp slow spike and wave and spike and wave but typically there will be a spike wave form a spike a wave form a spike a wave form a spike a wave form this is classically the easy easy will look like treatment is with valproate ethoxymate treatment part i will come to it once i open up the nice guidelines part okay typically see this kid 
this is how it goes see the kid and see the kid's style blank stare this is your typical absence issue seen in kids like i said seen in adults also see they are trying it will take a while for the kid to recover absence issue you can find in school going children they will give such case histories for mrcp also as guy who is studying in a school typically when i did my part 1 it came okay he suddenly the teacher reported he is suddenly looking at something and he is just fixated on something and then the school going kid return back to normal so this is a absence issue typically okay here like i said your mri will be normal eeg will show spike and wave and spike and wave pattern and no post tictal confusion hyperinflation hyperventilation can provoke it, okay now comes atypical absence issue this is something sorry this they had asked once what is an atypical absence seizure this you should be knowing typical absence seizure is what all the findings i show i told you mri will be normal blank stare will be there hyperventilation can provoke what is an atypical absence seizure there is always something atypical for every typical one okay here loss of consciousness can be still there <clears throat> where in a typical absence seizure loss of consciousness will not be there but here it can be there for a longer duration and asymmetrical three head spike and wave pattern can be seen there you will see a symmetrical spike and wave pattern here there will be asymmetrical spike and wave pattern can be seen okay and motor signs are seen here and abnormal interictal background typically in absence seizure the interictal background can be normal but here in the interictal background between the period of epilepsy it can be little abnormal also this is your atypical absence issue just know that they haven't asked this thing recent days but for a safer side it's better to know what is a atypical absence issue what are the things you should know about that? loss of consciousness can be there in absence issue as well and asymmetrical three head spike and motor signs are seen and abnormal interictal background this is an atypical absence issue they had asked once in mrcp and you should be also knowing this to diagnose in your actual clinical scenario then comes your myoclonic seizure or your myoclonic seizure. what happens here sudden brief electrical shock like contraction it's a sudden brief electrical shock like contraction here there won't be any post ictal confusion it can be a part of epilepsy syndrome like your juvenile myoclonic seizure typically provoked by sleep deprivation here what happens they will give a history of a 21 year old male or 18 year old female who partied all night and she went completely sleepless then the next morning she showed some seizure or your jerk jerking of limbs typically this is how they give an history that is your juvenile myoclonic seizure or juvenile myoclonic epilepsy it has an adult onset like i said it's more common in girls like i also said most more on awakening or after a party night typically they will give a after a party night after someone studied the whole night for some examination here iq everything will be normal iq everything will be normal but typically when it comes to jme juvenile myoclonic epilepsy or juvenile myoclonic seizure it's provoked by a sleep deprivation typically if you find a history of there is an 18 year old female or 21 year old female it's more in terms of a myoclonic type seizures all right this you should be knowing and iq is typically normal here sudden brief electrical shock like contraction okay typically it is response it responds really well to your drugs such as your valproate lev levetiracetam all those drugs drugs i will come later i'll tell you about how to diagnose those drugs now comes an attorney that's again an absence seizure video only now comes an atonic seizure this can be a part of your epilepsy syndrome what is an atonic syndrome atonic means the loss of tone will be there it can be seen in syndromes like lennox gestalt syndrome i'll show you lennox gestalt syndrome all right i'll show you that it's associated with other forms most commonly myoclonic seizure can form give you atonic seizure atonic is same myoclonic seizure post ictal phase immediately once the seizure is over there will be loss of tone all right 
there will be loss of torque here is one of the example of an atonic seizure c here in an adult gentleman who is in a playground who is playing just watch what happens when the guy completely loses tone this is a type of atonic seizure okay this is a type of atonic seizure the guy is going to be is going to completely uh, that's it he completely lost the stone and fell straight to the ground this is a classical atonic seizure this has been captured in camera this is a classical atonic seizure complete loss of tone will be there with this patient okay then your gtcs this is your generalized tonic clonic seizure this can occur as a part of epilepsy this can occur as a part of any medical cause here post ictal confusion can be seen most common causes non compliance so anybody in your paces exam or any history or any patient in your real life is coming with the seizure activity who is already on drugs who is already a known case of epilepsy first thing to rule out is compliance always 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 rule out whether the patient is taking drugs or not what happens in most people is the moment they have a seizure disorder they'll be literally scared what is happening to me am i having a brain tumor or i'm having something else the moment they are assured there is nothing else it will go off on its own and they have been given drugs they will start taking drugs and after a while they will completely stop taking drugs that is the problem okay that is the problem that's the first reason why seizures progress to your gtcs level all right most often the gtcs will lead go all the way to your status epileptics we will see all these things okay couple of things about seizures now we are going to see proper nice guidelines everything that you guys needed for your mrcp exam and your work on uk or even your interviews or even in your basis examination whatever it is we are going to now start with the nice guidelines we have just seen what are the types of seizure how they present some of the videos of it now we are going to see the nice guidelines here we are going to cover the investigation and the treatment part which drug to prescribe for which seizure everything we are going to cover from now on please everyone take note on these things this is very very important because entire nice guidelines nobody can read so we just carefully chosen the points which you guys need okay all right if the patient's history or examination suggests an epileptic seizure okay if you suspect the an epilepsy i told you the difference between seizure and an epilepsy you have to consider a routine eeg all right you have to consider a routine eeg while awake there are two types of eeg sleep eeg i'll come to that you have to carry out a routine eeg always all right and do not use eeg to exclude a diagnosis of epilepsy that's the second point somebody asked eeg is must for all seizure and eeg is the characteristic finding or the one we can use for diagnosis of a seizure please make note of this point nice clearly says do not use eeg to exclude a diagnosis of epilepsy never ever why nice says this many seizure interictal eeg can be normal many times eeg can only be abnormal during the seizure activity so just because somebody's eeg is normal at your office at your trust opd then it doesn't means the patient is not epileptic doesn't means patient is not epileptic that's what nice clearly clear is the third point nice says is here if an eeg is requested after first seizure please perform it within 72 hours this they can ask you in future as an mcq a patient with seizure is in your office and you are sitting there and <clears throat> it's the first seizure how soon you have to take an eeg that duration nice gives is within 72 hours okay don't forget 72 hours if the routine eeg is normal this scenario they will ask you many a times this scenario you may encounter in your exam if the routine eeg is normal for example a patient with seizure is coming to you his routine eeg is fine there is nothing you can find in his routine eeg what you should do next is your sleep deprived eeg many seizures just some just now we have seen juvenile myoclonic epilepsy this can be triggered if you deprive the patient of sleep and you can see the findings in eeg so if they are asking if the routine eeg is normal what you, what's the next step you are going to do you can go ahead and give prescribe a sleep deprived eeg study for the patient okay if the routine and sleep eeg sleep deprived eeg both are normal 
and there is some diagnostic uncertainty what you should do you should consider ambulatory eeg so what nice says overall one point i want to stress very very important point i want to stress upon is do not to use eeg to exclude a diagnosis of epilepsy normal eeg is not giving you any guarantee that there is no epilepsy second thing first eeg you are taking in 72 hours okay next if the eeg is normal if it is normal then again you are going to go for a sleep deprived eeg if that is again uncertain you can consider an ambulatory eeg all right same like your cardiology what do you do somebody comes with a palpitation by the time he is in the office his ecg can be perfectly normal you are going to put the patient on a hold send back home or an event monitor or a loop recorder same thing now has come for the neurology as well an ambulatory eeg can be done for up to 48 hours okay this is about eeg in seizures and neuroimaging in epilepsy okay neuroimaging what criteria nice has for neuroimaging always offer an mri scan to children and young people and adult diagnosed with epilepsy okay offer an mri scan okay unless they have idiopathic generalized epilepsy or self limited epilepsy with centrotemporal spike okay except this you have to offer an mri scan to children young people and adults diagnosed with epilepsy because many a times and uh, doctor somebody's mic is on can you please mute it for me somebody's microphone is on Somebody's microphone is on. I don't even know. Wrong give, give time. We don't give time. Okay. All right. Okay. Now comes to neuroimaging in epilepsy. Offer an MRI scan to children and young people and adults always in epilepsy unless there is an idiopathic generalized epilepsy or self-limited epilepsy with centrotemporal spike. In except these cases, you have to do an MRI. The MRI time duration here is within six weeks of the MRI referral. Within six weeks of the MRI referral. EEG is 72 hours. Don't forget because they will ask you in MCQs. Six weeks, that is 72 hours. Okay following regional MRI protocol. If MRI is contraindicated, then you can go for a CT scan. Okay. If MRI is contraindicated, you can go for a CT scan. All right. Then again, your antibody testing. Okay. With whom you have to do an antibody testing. If you find any kind of new onset epilepsy or if you suspect an autoimmune encephalitis, for example, if a patient is already having a carcinoma, or something like that and the patient is developing some seizure activity and you want to rule out any autoimmune encephalitis. maybe you want to check some anti o antibody or something in that case you can do an antibody testing in an epilepsy okay then comes the treatment these are the three specific investigations okay then all your prolactin and all your blood investigations are just the routine so these three investigations nice has a defined criteria okay neuroimaging when to do antibody testing when to do and especially about EEG they have a very specific criteria I hope all of you got it never ever make any mistake in this they ask in MCQ now comes to treatment of GTCS generalized tonic clonic seizure how you will treat nice suggests sodium valparate as the first line monotherapy all right note it down everybody note it down if you have a note first line for a GTCS nice suggest your sodium valparate okay for whom it is suggesting? Boys, men, yes, no issues you can give. Girls under 10 years who are unlikely to need treatment when they are old enough to have children. Okay. Simple thing, girls who are not in reproductive age group, you can go ahead with the sodium valproate as a monotherapy. That's the first line drug, the drug of choice for treating GTCS as per NICE guidelines. Very, very good. All right. In case somebody is in a reproductive group, reproductive age group, or somebody is coming and expressing their interest of having children, then you have to offer lamotrigine or levetiracetam as a first line monotherapy. All of you are clear? GTCS, sodium valproate. In any 
men and any women who is not in a reproductive spectrum. If the women is in a reproductive spectrum, Lamotrigina levitrasita. All right. If the monotherapy is unsuccessful, what are the first line add-ons? Typically, they will give a history. Okay, a 24 year old <clears throat> male is there or any age group. Let it be GTCS. You are putting the patient on sodium valproate. Or they will give a 28 year old female with the GTCS. Again, you are putting the patient on sodium valproate. This is how the questions are framed. Questions are framed based on the real life scenario. So what other drug, what's the next step we can do? NICE recommends four other drugs. Flubasan, Lamotrigine, again, Levitracetam, Parampenal, and Topiram. These are the drugs they offer as a first line add-on. They call it as a first line add-on. A lot of terms have been changed. Okay, they call it as a first line add-on drugs. If in case of a GTCS, if these two drugs fails, if they ask an MCQ in part one or part two, even if they are asking in your PACES exam for any scenario in station five, I believe all of you know now station five has changed. Only this is the last diet people who are going to do the station five in like in an eight minute scenario. Now it's changed. All right. Now this is the first line add on any drug you have to add is, should be between this list. These are the first line add-on for any GTCS. If sodium valproate fails, or even in case of lamotrigine or levitracetam fails in a reproductive age group women, then you can think of other drugs, plobasan, parampenal, or your topiramide. Okay, even if the first line add-on is unsuccessful, they are giving a scenario like this. For example, a patient with GTCS, they are giving, all right. Hypothetically, I'm creating a scenario. They are giving sodium valproate is given, no use. You give a levitracetam, still seizure is not responding. What you will do? What are the second line add-on? You can go for a brivacetam or you can go for lacosamide, phenobarbital, primidone, or zonisamide. These are the drugs NICE recommends. Any one of these drugs you can give as a second line add-on. Okay, NICE says like this is the first line, first line add-on, and second line add-on. All right. Second line add-on is going to be your brevacetam, lacosamide, phenobarbital, primidone, zonisamide. All this drug. Any of this drug you can give as a second line add-on. If the second line add-on also fails, then NICE gives this list of drugs. They won't go beyond second line add-on for MRCP level. Okay. This is for SE neurology. But I still wanted to add this slide because I don't want to miss anything from the NICE guidelines. All right. So I hope all of you are clear about GTCS. First line add-on, second line add-on, and third line, third line. I, I won't recommend you to learn. If you are interested, you can learn that. And also, here I just change the color of this statement because all of you should know, be aware that following anti-seizure medications, all these medications can actually exacerbate seizure in people with absence and myoclonic seizure, including your JME. Okay? All these drugs can exacerbate your absence seizure, myoclonic seizure, and your JMD. So we should potentially avoid these drugs. All right. I'll, I'll put that in another slide as well. I'll explain. Now comes to focal seizure. Okay. What do you do for a focal seizure? Focal seizure with or without evolution to your bilateral tonic clonic seizure. Because focal seizure can start just your hand movement in due course. The patient will have the movement in other areas as well. Okay, so in case of any focal seizure, your first line is going to be your lamotrigine or levetiracetam. All right, your focal seizure, the first line is going to be your lamotrigine or levitracetam. Be very, very careful. If the first choice is unsuccessful, all right, if lamotrigine or levitracetam is unsuccessful, in case of a focal seizure, okay, the add-on is going to be, second line add-on is going to be carbamazepine, oxcarbamazepine, carbamazepine, and zonisamide. These are your second line drugs. All right, make sure you understand that very, very clear and you noted it down so you don't make any mistake. Focal seizure, lamotrigine and levitracetam. Here the second line is going to be again your carbamazepine, oxcarbamazepine and zonisamide. All right, now comes to treating absent seizure. What do you do in case of an absent seizure? Absent seizure, including your childhood absent epilepsy, offer ethosuximide as the first line. NICE recommends ethosuximide. This is the latest NICE guideline. They recommend ethosuximide. The, if the first line is unsuccessful, then only NICE says to offer sodium alkaloid. Then only NICE says to offer sodium alkaloid. This is straight from NICE guidelines because many a times people come and show me this past medicine notes and the past medicine notes is written by that. You know, past medicine, you know, with all respect to the 
particular sir i'll tell you one thing this past medicine notes and notes and the questions are taken by people like you and me just who finished mrcp they can do even people who finished mrcp one sitting here you guys can go and write a question for past medicine and get some money they are open to that so be little judicious and please take those explanations with a grain of salt that's the reason for all our people we are just giving nice guidelines for you also everyone who is attending our lectures for all our people we are giving nice guidelines right away nothing we are talking out of that whatever the nice guidelines is we are exactly telling you the same thing all right and in case of the first line treatment is unsuccessful you can give a sodium valproate you know all sodium valproate criteria except reproductive age group you can give to everyone absence seizure the drug of choice is going to be your ethoxymate that's the first line drug all right that's a first line drug if second line treatment is unsuccessful for absence seizure even after giving a sodium valproate if it is going to be unsuccessful you can consider lamotrigine or levetiracetam all right third line and fourth line you need not know up to this level only they are going to ask you in mrcp in case of a myoclonic seizure okay always remember if the child is under 4 years refer to a specialist i know many of you may be thinking this child children are related to mrcp ch do they ask in mrcp s yes, they had asked they had asked conditions like dravet syndrome and west syndrome in mrcp that's the reason we have to learn everything okay here in case of a myoclonic seizure the first line is going to be a sodium valproate again even for your gtcs your first line is going to be sodium valproate you know the criteria for sodium valproate the person should not be in a reproductive age group all right first also next thing about myoclonic seizure is if sodium valproate is not successful then you can try offering a levetiracetam in case of a women with reproductive age group you can start levetiracetam all right this is about your myoclonic seizure treatment some things i need to tell you here is some seizure can be triggered or aggravated and some drugs can potentially precipitate some seizure this slide is very very important okay very very important everyone should know in case of gtcs carbamazepine and phenytoin can trigger gtcs this is your clinical pharmacology and neurology question this is how they bring the clinical pharmacology this is a neurology but they will again bring some drugs into the picture that's how they test so the first year of the cmt for medical training exam is your mrcp part one so they typically test these things with you clinical pharmacology is extremely extremely important even if you don't know to prescribe you should not go ahead and prescribe a wrong drug and cause any adversity to the patient that's the main 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 focus all right in case of absence seizure like i said these are the potentially dangerous drugs carbamazepine oxcarbamazepine phenobarbital phenytoin tigabin and bigarbitin all these drugs can aggravate your absence seizure then all this seizures can be again aggravated by the same list the same list of drugs so you should be at least knowing which drug you should not prescribe to a patient you should be knowing the first line second line drug if you are good enough you can know the third line drug as well and okay these are the basic things about seizure in nice guidelines and now comes to status epilepticus what nice says about status epilepticus what should be done in case of a status epilepticus all right what should be done regarding your status epilepticus what is a status epilepticus first a 5 minutes or more continuous seizure activity very often in case of a gtcs or two or more seizures without regaining of consciousness in between is called your status epilepticus this is the ilae definition this is your ilae definition please be very careful there is another entity called epilepsia partialis i said that way before continua this is not state of epilepticus i told you what is an epilepsia partialis continua there in case of an epilepsy epilepsia partialis continua the seizure activity will be continuous continuous seizure activity will be there in that particular patient but what happens in case of an epilepsia partialis continua is there won't be loss of consciousness no loc 
But seizure activity can be more than 24 hours. It can keep going on and on, but no elbosy. That differs, that differentiates epilepsy or partial is continua with the status epilepticus. Status epilepticus occurs in two phases. Okay, first you call it as a compensatory phase, second is called as a decompensatory phase. First, what happens in a case of a compensatory phase is your increased sympathetic activity. Here the BP is increased. Okay. A respiratory rate can be increased, breathing can be increased, okay, and there will be increased lactate. Lactate levels will be increased. Second phase is your decompensatory phase. Here, cardiorespiratory collapse can occur. This is the dangerous phase. Electrolyte imbalance can occur. This is the time where there will be rhabdomyolysis. Typically, if your creatinine is going up and your potassium is going up, the patient is standing aneuric or oliguric. You have to think in terms of rhabdomyolysis, especially in a seizure patient. And hypothermia can be occur, acute tubular necrosis, rice ICP, cerebral edema, all these things can occur. All other complications in case of your decompensatory phase of your status epilepticus. So, what are the etiology of status epilepticus? What can trigger a state epileptic, status epilepticus? Like I said, non adherence. I had mentioned that before. Any patient with repeated seizure who is already on drugs, first thing you have to question the patient's adherence, whether the patient is actually taking the drugs or not. First thing we have to question is the patient other and so on. Second, barbage rates can trigger it. Benzodiazepines can trigger it. Your theophylline can trigger it because they had asked once about theophylline. Whether the theophylline actually triggers seizures? Yes. Imipenum, lithium, alcohol related. Alcohol intoxication can cause seizure and alcohol withdrawal also can cause seizure. Trauma, a stroke or tumor, that can cause metabolic syndrome like decreased blood glucose. Decrease sodium or decrease calcium or magnesium, all these things, even hypernatremia also can pass. All right. And viral encephalitis, okay. Viral encephalitis, this can again cause state epilepticus. This is the most common cause of new onset status epilepticus. First time you are seeing a patient who is showing all the features of status epilepticus, who is not an epileptic, then you have to think in terms of any viral encephalitis, okay? Viral encephalitis can cause that. Again, autoimmune encephalitis, like anti-NMDA antibodies, like I said, autoimmune anti-U, anti-NMDA, all those things, all right? Paraneoplastic, like I said, anti-U antibodies. This you should think of this. All these things can precipitate your status epilepticus. So, how do you manage status epilepticus? This is acute medicine management. All right. Quickly secure to IV lines. Why I'm just written in this order is because in interviews they are asking these things. Okay. Recently, when I attended an interview for a teaching post in Oxford, they asked me this status epilepticus, how you manage everything they asked, including the dosage. All right. So, first line you have to give a lorazepam, a benzodiazepine, about 0.1 milligram per kg. Okay. If you are not able to get that and you can give a IV line if you are not able to secure an IV line. Because some patients will come, like, you know, they'll, they'll be very obese. Nurses will be keeping on struggling with them. And sometimes you can give a rectal or buccal midazole also. If IV line is not, you are not able to secure. On second line, give infusion of phosphenitoin. That's the second line. First, you are giving a lorazepam or a midas. Then second line is your phosphenitoin or levetiracetam or your valparate 20 to 30 milligram per kg then check the response check the response if the patient is not responsive after 30 minutes okay you can give iv propofol with or without medazola all right if still the patient is refractory there is nothing happening even after giving and pumping the patient with this many drugs all right then immediately if they ask you in the mcq stem or if you are facing a real life patient Transfer the patient to your IT. Uh, first line medication in clinical or hospital settings. Doctor, first line medication, there is no difference in clinical or hospital setting. First line medication, nice, describes as a first line, is always a first line. When it comes to drugs like a status, when it comes to management of things like status epilepticus, this is again acute medicine protocol. They follow in most trust. Maybe one or two trust may prefer a midazolam over lorazepam. Some people prefer lorazepam over midazolam, but still the first line is always the first line and the second line is always the first line. When it comes to UK, it's always like that. I don't know about the other countries. UK always follows like that. I think even Ireland does the same thing, I believe. Okay. Then after shifting the patient to ITU, you can give a phenobarbital. Still, if it is not responding, then anesthetist follow. Then from that, it's going to be under a specialist care. 
not a general internist care. So the patient is going to be a yeah, welcome doctor and a specialist care. Okay. Now comes to valparate, couple of lines. I need to tell about valparate. The therapeutic level is going to be 50 to 125 mg. Okay. It inhibits the metabolism of many drugs. Okay. Please, everyone, valparate your phenytoin and your carbonosine. Please, please, please read about these drugs. Pharmacology very clearly. All right. If you have your pharma form book which you had used for your <clears throat> undergraduate education that's more than enough that's more than enough but make sure you read from the updated version it's more than enough just read this pharmacology of these three drugs especially valparate phenytoin carbonosine all right also one more drug in neurology lithium neuropsychiatric these drugs. these drugs are very very important everything in and out will be asked they ask an ambulance or GP setting, then we cannot give IV lorazepam, then we don't have to give back to medicine. Doctor, they won't ask you in the ambulance setting. Ambulance setting, you are not going to be there because they are testing medical registrars. Medical registrars are not going to sit in the ambulance. Ambulance, there will be paramedic crew. Okay, they will take care of it. And most of the GP setting also, they won't ask you because GP setting is for people who are doing MRC GP. They are the ones who are dealing with primary care level you are going to deal the patient in case of a registrar level. So you don't need to worry about that. What this your work is when they are coming to your OP at the level of registrar. If you are a registrar, you will be mainly posted in hospital and not in a GP setting. Okay. So mostly you have to follow the protocol which I said. So in a GP or an ambulance, no, nothing to worry about that. That is That will be dealt with separate people. Right, it inhibits metabolism of many drugs. What it can cause? What are the adverse effects? Lot of adverse effects. There is a huge list. Can increase your ammonia. It can cause alopecia. It can cause hepatotoxicity, pancreatic toxicity, thrombocytopenia. Plenty of things are there. All right. How to stop the drug in case of valproate? There should be no family history of any <clears throat> abnormal seizure pattern. Everything you should inquire in the family about the patient and then normal EEG should be there and normal MRI, two years seizure free activity. All these things you have to think before stopping a valparate. All epileptic drugs should be given for one to two years. All right. Always remember all epileptic drugs should be given for one to two years. For pregnancy, NICE is now recommending lamotrigine. NICE is now recommending lamotrigine. All right. These things you should know about the drugs. All right, other seizure syndromes. Now we are going into some of the other seizure syndromes. Like I said, most of the seizure syndromes are associated with pediatric age group. But still, what happens is they had asked those things in MRCP. So I'm bound to teach you those things as well. Okay. So first thing is about Lafora's disease. All right, Lafora's disease. They had asked for MRCP part two. Part one people they may ask you to. There is no guarantee they may not ask you. Past positive. Okay, past what is a past periodic acid skip positive intracellular proteoglycan inclusion body will be there. I'll show you the inclusion bodies. All right, proteoglycan inclusion body is called as your laphoros bodies can be seen. Right. This can be diagnosed only by DNA sequence. Okay, DNA sequencing is the way you can diagnose. The other name of laphoros disease is progressive myoclonic epilepsy. They can ask anything. So laphoros disease typically has a triad of findings. There can be a dementia, there can be a myoclonus, and there can be hallucination. All right, there is a dementia, there can be myoclonus, and there can be hallucination. If you are finding a triad of all these three findings, you have to think in terms of Lafora's disease. All right, it is inherited autosomal recessive manner. In autosomal recessive manner is the inheritance. All right, and 10 to 18 years commonly affected. Prognosis is unfortunately very poor. In Lafora's disease, the prognosis is very, very poor. And recently, AMPA antagonist called as paramphenyl can be used. It is still under a lot of controversies whether to use it, how it is, but it is approved by FDA. You can go ahead and try this drug. What they will do, something we have to try. That's it. Dementia, myoclonus, hallucination, don't forget. Autosomal recessive, don't forget. Lafora bodies, don't forget. 
All right, it has a poor prognosis. Again, don't forget the point. Fifth point, again, parent panel, the AMP antagonist is the drug of choice here. As for us, these are your lefer of bodies. This they had put for part two people. They are absolutely confused. Okay, many people thought this LB because I don't know what happened to them. This LB letter was there. And in the MCQ option, they given some symptoms like that. And they given very cleverly, they given one of the options as what? Your Louis body dementia. And a lot of people thought, okay, this could be some Louis body dementia. They marked that. And everyone got it wrong, absolutely. These are your Lafora bodies, okay? These are proteoglycan bodies. It stains positive for pass. Now, there is something called a Rolandic seizure, okay? This is typically seen in 5 to 10 years. This has asked him. MRCP part one. So I have wanted to tell you this. Totally it resolves by puberty. It has a good prognosis. Infrequent partial seizure. Typically temporal side, there will be high voltage spikes. Right? Temporal side, high voltage spikes. It itself resolves. It has a good prognosis. By the time the kid reaches his puberty, the kid will be fine. This has been asked multiple times, West syndrome. West syndrome is very, very important. Everyone, please listen clearly and carefully. These are infantile spasm, also known as salam spots. That is a rapid bending of the head with the torso forward. That's called a salam spots. I think I have video. Yes, I have video. Yes. I'll show you how it looks like. Okay. Treatment is usually with ACTH. Okay, in case of tuberous sclerosis, we can give a bigger button because West syndrome can occur as isolated standalone syndrome. It can also occur along with your tuberous sclerosis. Okay, this is one of the neurocutaneous syndrome. I hope all of you know what is a tuberous sclerosis. Okay, all your Ashley macules, okay, and I don't know, masturbation, all those things. All right. In case of a tuberous sclerosis with the West syndrome, they had asked particularly the drug you have to give is going to be your Viga button. Always remember, note it down, tuberous sclerosis plus West syndrome, you are going to give Viga button. Otherwise, if standalone West syndrome, you are going to give an ACTH. That's it. There will be jackknife, flexor, spasm, or you call as salam spurs, anything. Here, something called hips arrhythmia can be seen. Hips arrhythmia can be seen in EEG. I will show you the EEG and explain it. All right. And Himalayan waves. What is a Himalaya? Himalaya is a hill, big hill. Himalayan waves means what? What is in the Himalaya? It's a big hill. Like the wave will be, it's going to be a big wave, a big each wave. I'll show you that. Okay, I'll show you. You will see what is a salam spell or a jackknife flexus person that you will understand. It's common in male more than female. It is associated with hypoxia. Any form of hypoxia can trigger this. All right. Most of them develop permanent motor and mental disabilities. All right. Most patients, sadly, they develop permanent disabilities. All right. What you guys should be knowing is, in case of tuberous sclerosis, we got button because they had asked this multiple times. Standalone West syndrome, the treatment of choice is going to be your ACTH. All right. See this video. See this. Uh, <coughs> see this baby. See the movement. See the head movement. It's as if like she's telling salam or it called as a plexus possum. This is a classical West syndrome baby. This is a classical West syndrome. I wanted to show you so that everyone will understand and never miss it. Okay, this is a West syndrome baby. All right. This is what I said. This is called hips arrhythmia. Already most EEGs will look like this. This is the most confusing EEG with the Himalayan waves. See the size of the waves. See the size of the waves here. Unusually huge. Unusually huge. This is your hips arrhythmia with a chaotic background. Nothing you will make out of this. In a West syndrome EEG, if you take, you will make nothing out of it. It's like someone scribbled everywhere. Like that it will be. It's called a chaotic background with a Himalayan waves. That's called as a hips arrhythmia. You will typically get in your EEG. All right. Now comes many people's favorite Lennart's Gestalt syndrome. This has been again asked in MRCP. Here, multiple type of seizure pattern can be seen. 
how to diagnose is doctor is sarithmia you should know and you should take the patient's history patient's presenting complaints all these things only will give you a diagnosis all right and many times it can be associated with things like a tuber sclerosis typically if this is a classical hip sarithmia doctor Dr. Taibur, if you get an EEG like that, then mostly it is going to be a West syndrome. Also, patients mostly, they will be four years or younger if they come. Definitely, you have to refer the patient to a specialist, a pediatric neurologist. All right. This is your Lennox Gestalt syndrome. Okay. Here, several multiple types of seizure can be there. A tonic seizure. I showed you how a tonic seizure occurs. I showed you how a guy fell down when he lost his tone. All right. This is how it occurs. A tonic is the most time. Atypical febrile seizure also seen. I also told you about atypical febrile seizure. How it presents. What are the components of a atypical febrile seizures? I told you. And severe mental retardation can be there. Here EEG will slow show slow spike and wave pattern. Okay, especially over the frontotemporal region. This they had given and as the Lennox Gastaut syndrome. A kid with mental retardation, atonic seizure, they typically mention slow spike and wave pattern in the frontotemporal region. So, Lennox just starts Drug of choice is lamotrigine. Felbamate is another drug that has some favorable effect on cognitive function because there is going to be mental retardation. So, you can give another drug called felbamate that can again help. Topiramate can be given because the patients with the Lennox Gestalt syndrome, they can have something called drop attacks. Okay, drop attack. In ENT, also there you will come across something called drop attacks, especially a condition called Tumarkin's autolithic crisis, they call it. Like that, here there will be some drop attacks can be there. So, in case of a drop attack, you can give topiramate. In case of any improvement, if you want to improve the patient's cognition, you can give a felpamate. Another drug of choice is going to be a lamotrigine. Here, only thing you can do is calosectum, part of the corpus callosum. That's the only thing you can do. That's the only surgery that is actually available for Lennox Gestalt syndrome. And we are going to now MCQ challenge. With this, the, because I'm just winding up the seizure. From here, we are going to work out a couple of MCQs together. Okay. And <clears throat> at the end, we will wind up. And after we wind up with the MCQ, if you guys have any issues or questions or queries about your MRCP preparation or anything related to MRCP, I'm giving you 15 minutes, you can ask. So we will go to the first MCQ. Here, a 55-year-old man is coming with alcohol dependency presence with the seizure, which is attributed to alcohol withdrawal. Okay. Which one of the following statement regarding this seizures is correct? Long-term diazepam therapy is indicated or long-term therapy with phenytoin is indicated. Seizures are likely to be accompanied by hallucinations. Seizures may be termed as alcoholic blackouts. Seizures typically occur within 48 hours of alcohol withdrawal. I have told you this thing. If you had actually listened to my lecture, I mentioned what is it. Absolutely, it is E. That's what I personally wrote and mentioned you. It's E. All right. In case of an alcoholic seizure, you need not to give any kind of long-term drugs. No need to do that. Seizures are likely to be accompanied by hallucination. No, it's not. There's no such thing called alcoholic <clears throat> blackout. They won't have seizure. All right. This is E. Okay. This is E. Typically, 48 hours, within 48 hours of alcohol. And this not happens with everyone, okay? There are different types of alcohol. There are people who drink every day. Those cases, if they stop drinking for 48 hours, they will develop this. Okay? Those cases, they will develop this. CT brain, typically, you can do the, the patient any had any kind of head injury because alcoholic, typically, what alcohol does? Alcohol is a type of another blood thinner. Easily, they will bleed. Easily, easily they will bleed and be easy subdural hematoma and everything can be done. All right. This is an alcoholic seizure. Now comes to the second MCQ. Here an 18-year-old female presents to you. 18-year-old female presents to you with 12 weeks into unplanned pregnancy. She is 12 weeks into unplanned pregnancy. She has been diagnosed with epilepsy. Carefully read the question. I brought this question for some reason. And she was diagnosed with epilepsy. Six years ago, she was able to control that with sodium valproate, which she is taking. In taking. OCP she is taking for three years. Now she is pregnant. Which of the following is correct? 
us to reread the question once again 18 year old girl is coming there and you are checking her urine graven ducts ducts or anything she is pregnant okay again you are checking the usg she is 12 weeks into the pregnancy this lady is taking sodium valproate already already even during the 12 weeks also she has taken if she comes before 12 weeks then there is a different thing so what do you do here lamotrigine should be discontinued or substituted or she should be advised to have termination of pregnancy there is a lot of rules for termination of pregnancy in uk okay or sodium valproate interaction with the ocp increase the risk of pregnancy or the dose of sodium valproate should be increased there is an increased risk of a neural tube defect in a fetus what is the answer so many people got e e e e lot of people got e yes the answer is e okay the answer is e the patient has become pregnant on valproate the therapy has controlled seizure now there is no point in changing the drug okay now there is no pointing in changing the drug always remember if the patient is coming before she gets pregnant then you can change the drug as per nice guidelines but the patient if already she started on valproate there is no point in ever changing the drug it's never going to help you all right it's never going to help you okay and also valproate is not an enzyme inducer it's not going to speed up your ocp metabolism and make her pregnant on during the valproate therapy all right but neural tube defects will be more that you have to explain the patient have taken this drug there can be some defect we can do some ultrasound we can rule out anything like that we want to put you in another drug called folate therapy in cases we have to explain this cases this is a basic scenario also <clears throat> if wants to continue the pregnancy which medication like that that's what i'm explaining dr jyoti now you can you have to explain the patient all the pros and cons because it's already done 12 weeks most of the development started already and she will be in the mid phase of development so you have to take advice in clinical setting you have to refer to ogcians and they will take a usg they'll see if there is any neural tube defect if there is anything they will definitely explain the patient and secondly you have to start supplementing her with folate many a times people are not aware they are pregnant yeah before pregnancy if the patient is coming you can go on with the lamotrigine but here it's already done 12 weeks because many a times patient won't be aware typically pregnancy is not dramatic in some cases in uk i have seen cases coming up to i think one lady uh, 21st week i think she was 21st to 22nd week she just thought she is gaining weight with that she is jumping around she is going this and that she is so much salting my god the baby was safe she was another completely she's pregnant not everyone will have all this you know morning sickness all the other symptoms nothing some people will be just like that they'll be pregnant they'll be surprised to find out they are pregnant okay this is how you have to carry out this case if the patient is already taking alprey there's no need to change the drug you can just have to explain the pros and cons and you have to start the patient on folate therapy already it's done there is nothing you are going to do now bringing a lamotrigine or levetiracetam or any other drug here it's done you have to explain you have to start folate therapy you can only prevent further neurotubule defects now comes to another mcq here a 27 year old man is presenting with two year history of intermittent tingling sensation involving his left side tingling sensation it starts with his fingers spreads in 10 to 20 seconds to the whole affected arm and leg on the same side the one attacks only last for 1 minute which of the following is the most likely diagnosis 27 year old guy is coming some tingling numbing sensation is there 10 to 20 seconds it starting on the fingers what is the diagnosis is it hyperventilation is it migraine with aura multiple sclerosis somatosensory seizure or is a transient ischemic attack what is the diagnosis here this is going to be your d hyperventilation may cause tingling and numbness but it won't just last just exactly for one minute migraine with aura definitely other symptoms of migraine will be there some headache will be there some nausea can be there some vomiting can be there all these things can be there multiple sclerosis it's common in men or women multiple sclerosis is more common in female 
and not just the sensory attack there will be some weakness can be there there can be some optic neuritis feature can be there all these things of the multiple sclerosis can be there here transient ischemic attack won't just go come and go in just less than a minute you know there will be some weakness for some time to be there or there can be something like your amarox 6 fugax transient sufficient so none of the things fits here so what you have to think of a somato sensory seizure positive symptoms won't be here okay positive symptoms symptoms like a jerking and the thing will be there but only tingling is the only positive symptoms will be there okay all right in case of like is a transient ischemia there can be negative symptoms like a weakness numbness all these things can be there and spread of symptoms or marching indicates migraine 5 to 20 minutes it will take to in migraine march that spread around okay and this is a somato sensory seizure they had asked once what is the localization for a somato sensory seizure you have to localize to parietal lobe parietal lobe is a area when it's affected it can cause your somato sensory seizure now mcq number 4 you are called to see a 23 year old woman okay after delivery she developed severe diarrhea and vomiting over 24 hours people who attended my neurologic lecture i just told you this thing despite intravenous fluid replacement she has become confused she had a generalized tonic clonic seizure developed a left hemiparesis what is the diagnosis is it amniotic fluid embolism is it eclampsia severe hyponatremia okay is it a sagittal sinus thrombosis is a vertebral artery dissection i'll give you one more option or is it some tots palsy what is the diagnosis here eclampsia are you sure guys something else excellent this is d this is your sagittal sinus thrombosis i had explained to you the sequence of events okay sequence of events post partum okay don't forget this this is how it starts post partum number 1 number 2 in a post partum woman okay complaining of severe diarrhea or vomiting or simply i will put any kind of fluid loss or dehydration okay any kind of fluid loss or dehydration in a post partum woman then followed by this there is a seizure then a neurological deficit this sequence if you are finding in any patient even in your real patient in a ward if you are finding or in a question then the diagnosis is going to be your sst that is your sagittal sinus thrombosis don't don't forget don't make any mistake this is how the sequence of events will unfold okay first a fluid postpartum lady fluid loss dehydration followed by dehydration there is a seizure followed by seizure there is a neurological deficit this is your sagittal sinus thrombosis all right like all the things i told Okay. other risk factor that can cause this your aplas your proteinous deficiency antithrombin 3 deficiency lupus all these things can cause that okay now mcq number 5 a 17 year old girl was admitted to the accident and emergency department after suffering a gtcs at 7 hour she admit she went to a night club the night before only to went to bed around 1 o'clock a detailed history reveals her upper limb twitch daily in the early morning okay but for only few seconds an outpatient eeg is requested what is the most likely diagnosis nobody should go wrong here because this again i we have just learned this condition i told you clearly a sleepless night triggered this nobody should go wrong yes excellent this is your juvenile myoclonic epilepsy all right this is a juvenile myoclonic epilepsy all right typically like i said it can be provoked by a sleep deprivation or excessive alcohol intake excessive alcohol intake this is your juvenile myoclonic epilepsy all right treatment choices going to be sodium alprate and lamotrigine and 30 to 40 percent of the family members may also be affected all right last two questions a 30 year old man presents to emergency department with a history of epilepsy a 30 year old man all right he started experiencing jerking movements of the angle of his mouth then progressed to have a jerking movements in his left thumb and left index finger 
All right. Finally, his entire left side develops jerking movements, which subsides in 10 minutes. After this, he has weakness down to the left side for several hours. During the event, he had full consciousness. What is the likely diagnosis? This again, I had explained to you. What is this? Absolutely, this is a Jacksonian march. We call this as a Jacksonian march. It starts with one place and it progressively goes to other after other after other. I showed you the video also in a partial seizure. That lady, how it started. Started from her head, then goes to the neck, then to the chest, then she went to the shoulders and then went, went to the fingers, it flickered and even the eyelids started flickering. But eyelid flickering was not properly recorded there. But every other thing I had shown, this is your Jacksonian march, right? This is your Jacksonian march, right? Typically, temporal lobe epilepsy, it would present with the sensation of deja vu. I hope all of you know what is a deja vu, okay? I hope all of you know what is a deja vu, all right? Other things, you we'll see, okay? Now comes to MCQ number six. Here, a 25-year-old man presents with the first episode of GTCS. His girlfriend says he collapsed after coming home from a night out at the cinema and suffered five minutes of GTCS. Okay, any seizure, always you should ask the history from the bystander. Very, very important because the patient who is going to, who has underwent a seizure, he may not be able to give the entire history. Okay. Some foaming at the mouth and incontinence of urine. All this suggests it's a true seizure. On further questioning, it transpires that she had noticed him on a number of occasions, seeming vacant for a few minutes and smacking of his lips. This is very, very important, very, very classical finding of one particular seizure. Smacking of lips for a few minutes. He mentions that he often notices a, often notices a feeling of deja vu and a feeling of anxiety in his abdomen. Like I said, they will have a strange feeling, something that is rising from the abdomen. All right, chest and chest area immediately prior to this episode. On quite a few of these occasions, he seemed to lose track of where he was sometimes. He had febrile convulsions at the baby. As a baby, there is no family history. Neurological examination is unremarkable. What is the diagnosis? Yes, I already said to you this. This we have seen. This is a mesial or medial temporal lobe epilepsy. Smacking of lips. Family history of epilepsy. And there is uh, there is no family history of epilepsy, but there is a history of febrile seizure as a baby. All the smacking of lips, the deja vu feeling, the anxiety in the abdomen, some epigastric sensation, rising epigastric, temporal lobe epilepsy. This is your temporal lobe epilepsy. Like I said, lip smacking is very, very suggestive of temporal lobe. There are other things also as lip smacking, all right. But an epilepsy, I have to think of temporal lobe epilepsy. Most of the time, it's associated with your febrile convulsions, like I said, hippocampal sclerosis. That's why the treatment is what? Your hippocampal. You remove the hippocampus. Okay. Now comes to the last question. A 17-year-old girl presents to the emergency department brought by her parents, where she has been acting strangely over the last six months. Her parents are particularly concerned about her going out without her parents' permission and drinking alcohol. Her parents noticed her walking has become progressively more unsteady. Progressively, it is becoming unsteady. And they have been often have difficulty understanding what she is saying. Her mother says she has a depression and her father's mother's mother has depression and father suffers from epilepsy. On examination, she has slurred speech, coarse nystagmus of lateral gaze, that is bilateral and an ataxic gait. Rest of the examination is normal. Just think in this patient what happens. Mother is a depressive patient and father is an epilepsy. This lady has a classical finding of a nystagmus. All right. An ataxic gait. Ataxic gait or unsteadiness. Slurring. What this could be? Frederick's ataxia. Who is going to be Frederick's ataxia, doctor? Just read the question. Only last six months she is exhibiting this. Okay. She was fine before that. Oh no, that's not spinocerebellar ataxia. 
that's not spinal cerebellar ataxia so just see very clearly what this could be it's not alcohol related see doctors to develop this kind of disorder as an, as an alcoholic it is going to take quite a while quite a while nobody can develop all of a sudden if the patient who is an alcoholic is going to develop a cerebellar disease it is going to take quite a long time not in a day or not in few months they will develop she is just 17 so it means she should have started drinking since she is 13 years old so that's not possible frederick's ataxia won't present all of a sudden for last 6 months with this kind of thing hypothyroidism i hope all of you know the hypothyroid symptoms so it is again not going to be present with that spino cerebellar ataxia no this is a phenytoin toxicity this is a classically mrcp they will test you seeing all the findings we will have a knee jerk reaction to go ahead and mark frederick's ataxia here it is not that's why i always tell, told you guys to follow the pen and paper technique just take a pen or your pencil which they are giving you just to start underlining things which is more important this lady is taking his fa her father's anti epileptic drug this phenytoin those this phenytoin toxicity is something that can cause this nystagmus an ataxic gait and slurring all these three findings you don't get slurring and all these things in your frederick's ataxia frederick's ataxia can cause nystagmus it can cause other things like your ataxia and also it can cause your conduction defects all those things will be there spino cerebellar ataxia associated with some kind of immunocompromised or immunosuppressed state they will get a frequent infections with ataxia hypothyroidism no alcohol related cerebellar disease not at this young age 17 she may be drinking once in a while in a prom or in a party but never she cannot never she could have developed an alcohol related cerebellar disease so this is a phenytoin toxicity so every word is very very important here i hope all of you got it okay just two more things before i wind up if they are giving another other case okay somebody with an epilepsy okay developed or maybe the same history they are telling okay same history they are telling with just visual disturbance what drug could cause that the same history with visual disturbance which epileptic drug can cause that absolutely excellent yes we got but okay another one more the same thing same scenario i think which epileptic drug can cause your renal anti epileptic drug huh? renal stones most painful condition right renal stones renal colic is something once you get it done phenytoin can cause but there is a more drug that is very notorious to cause renal stones very notorious starts with letter t topiramate yes excellent is a very notorious drug to cause renal stones so do your drugs like your acyclovir again it can cause crystallization and cause renal stones so you should be very careful while prescribing drugs okay this is a phenytoin toxicity okay with this we are winding up the lecture on seizures i hope the information given here should be fine enough for you to crack down mcqs and treat the real life patients with seizures okay this is our med expert team contact and you can see that in the chat you can contact us anytime if you guys have any queries regarding your mrcp exams preparation please feel free to reach us out we are always there to help you and please leave your good feedbacks there in the group we are <clears throat> more motivated seeing feedbacks and we'll be able to give you more and more free sessions like this more and more free sessions we are coming up with like i said i want to cover all the scientific topics core topics core medical topics for you okay so that none of you gets missed out anything all right thank you so much thank you so much everyone and uh, thank you for attending and listening to the lecture if you guys any need anything our counselors are always available for you okay thank you so much thank you so much god bless you all and see you again with another free lecture most probably in the upcoming week okay all right see you guys then nobody has anything you can anytime you can approach us anything regarding mrcp we are always open all right we are always open and please do leave the feedbacks about the lecture so that we will bring you more and more lectures free lectures like this all right see you guys then good night good morning or good evening it doesn't matter whichever part of the world you are in see you bye bye